Welcome guys, how's it going? So today we're going to deal with three big misconceptions when installing three inch antiques. Well, first of all, let's try and look at them. What we need to take care of first. First misconception. A lot of people don't believe, well, not, not people, think they could just install three inch antiques and just take off and go. This is not right. You need a tune, okay? You have to get a tune in order to run three inch antiques. The reason why is simple. Over here is where the mass airflow sensor goes into the tubing. The biggest problem with this whole arrangement is the size of the three inch. The factory spec is anywhere, I think, around two and a half inches. So we have a half inch more air volume, air mass, passing this mass airflow sensor that's not going to be metered correctly. Because it's not going to be metered correctly, we're going to have possibly a lean situation, a rough idle, everything like that. You have to get with your tuner and you have to get uh, tuned in. You have Your tuner knows what to do. I don't really know what the magic they do, but the tuner will tune the ECU in order to compensate for that extra air volume passing around that larger area and the mass airflow. Misconception number two is tubing going in through the radiator support. Through the radiator support, a lot of people just squeeze the soft tubing. Because it's soft tubing, they just pass it through. And that is, is doable. Passing the silicone through the radio support is doable, but you are hampering and you are creating a bottleneck, bottleneck a restriction. You're creating a restriction for your three inch intakes. Because what you're doing, you have three inch in front with a big filter, you're sucking through, and then you have to pass through that narrow, that narrow pathway where the silicone tubes pass in. The proper thing to do, we need to enlarge those openings. You know, back in the still in three, V3 days, you had to cut the radius support to pass that through because the stillins were hard piped and the hard pipe passed through there. So you had to cut it. There's no way about it. Um, there's a lot of intakes that have a silicone area going through that, that part. And a lot of people, they just leave it. They squeeze it through and leave it. Don't do that. If you want to maximize your three inch intakes, cut that rad support. It ain't hurting anything. Your car's not gonna cry about it. Your car's gonna love you for it. Get that mass, get that volume in there. Along with cutting the driver's side, on the driver's side, they have some AC lines passing. You want to protect those AC lines with some fuel hose. Once again, we will go ahead and probably cut, show a picture or something like that. So that's misconception number two. Don't squeeze it. Don't create a restriction. You need to open that up, open that rad support, open that core support, let your engine breathe. Now today, taking care of misconception number three. With three inch intakes, there's, you know under the intakes factory and stuff like that, there's the little nipple that draws air. That little nipple comes into this port here. A lot of people, they just block off those ports, see another one there, and just call it a day. And you don't do that. Do not block off those ports and call it a day. Because when you block off those ports and call it a day, let me show you what happens. Ah, as usual, let me get my keys. So when you block off that port, you create this problem. Right, you hear that? What that is, is a huge vacuum. The vacuum is not that heavy right now because the car just started. We haven't really driven into stuff for the vacuum to build. But you can see the videos I put out before this to introduce this video. And this will put pressure on your crankcase, your seals and stuff like pulling and pulling because it creates a, a, a huge vacuum. So we're going to rectify that today 
And I'm going to show you what we're going to do to rectify that today. By just capping this valve cover port and leaving it as is, what it's doing is creating a massive vacuum in the crankcase. The reason for this is because this is an inlet. Okay? This inlet takes metered air from, I'm talking about the OEM setup, takes metered air from the intake ports, factory or aftermarket, these don't have the ports, so it sucks it in there, goes through the crankcase, it equalizes pressures, whatever, whatever, and then this output port here, okay, this output port comes back into the manifold, the manifold creates another vacuum, another suction, and it pulls the air into the combustion chamber and burns all that unspent fuel and also gums up your valves with all the blow-by gases, yada, yada, yada. But when people install three-inch intakes and all they do is just block this off, we're creating a negative pressure because the intake manifold is still pulling from these locations all the blow-by and crankcase atmosphere and everything like that. So to correct this, we need to condemn these two ports also. We need to stop this vacuum back in there and we have to vent an atmosphere, these two ports. Now, if you want to have system like OEM, whatever, it may cause problems because like I said, this is metered air, a metered air inlet. <clears throat> and if you just put a fresh air inlet into there while keeping this connection OEM and, and as is, you might create a lean condition because it's unmetered air coming into the intake. So the best thing to do when you're doing three inch manifolds is either vent these to a catch can, vent these to a catch can, okay, these two here also, there are two sides, or you could just plug the intake ports and vent the out ports to a catch can. I don't have a catch can yet. I'm still up in the air what catch can to get. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to temporarily use that ECS kit I bought a while ago. So until I decide which avenue or which catch can or which catch can coolant combo tank I'm going to go with, I'm going to have to vent the crankcase with the EPS tuning kit. The EPS tuning kit comes with these adapters. These are the most important part of the whole thing. You could probably get... Um, fittings and every hoses and stuff like that on yourself but this is really what you need because this is what goes into the, the valve cover and then connects into the fittings also with EPS tuning kit they're on their passenger side it is a little tight so they supply a little spacer and stuff like that to raise the fuel regulator I believe up a little bit so that it will clear the hose and everything will be copacetic. I will say these silicone breeders, if you vent properly, I guess there's not a suction to have, but I went ahead at O'Reilly's and got this very heavy duty rubber cap set. And that's the heavy duty rubber caps you see that's on the intake side of the valve cover PCV system. Let's go ahead and let's give ourselves some extra room to work. Go ahead, remove this bracket. While that is moved, we have this other bracket here, which is at a 10, has not a 10, that's a 12. EPS kit. Have ourselves the 12 with the spacer to raise it up. Put the spacer underneath between the front engine cover and the bracket. And then thread it on. So of course, that is now a standard bolt. Ugh. So I think half inch, is it? Yeah, 
Yes, half inch. You would think they would keep everything metric. But that's a, apparently a little too much to ask for. Surprise! This was actually kind of really tight on here. Surprised he had it that tight into the aluminum. But don't tighten it too tight, because remember, it is still aluminum. All right, now we're going to get the other spacer. Once again, put the riser between the front cover and the screw. And this actually I might drop. So let me get a magnet tool. And you can't use a magnet tool because it's aluminum. <laughs> it's aluminum, so it's not going to hold a magnet. So let me get my super duper long pliers, bird beaks. Line it up a little bit. Beautiful. Just turn. Yep. How much is that? Twelve. I just didn't have the thing on there properly. Okay, that's a ten. I don't want to talk that too hard. I'll double check that. Actually, I need to go in some more. Okay, so our extensions out of the way. So right now we gotta go ahead and remove that clip, all these spring clips, to get all this stuff out. Put that one there. Let's get this middle one here. And this is the factory hose. Let's go ahead and remove this clip. Remove this clip. Oh my goodness, I was sucking in a lot of oil with that. I wonder if it's 26. Now it's a 26. For the fifth one we get from ECS, but it's not 26 for those PCVs. So it's a 23. And as you can see here, that is what we're left with, is the PCV. Let's go ahead and get that out. It shouldn't be too tight. Huh, it is a little bit. Okay, that was very low effort. Now I'm using a half inch drive. That is very sketchy because half inch drive, you can apply a lot of torque. Okay, like I say, these are going in plastic. You gotta be very careful when you're taking it out. It's a little factory valve. So 26 for the factory PCV and the aftermarket fitting to go into the valve cover is a 26. 23 for the factory, 26 for this one. So let's put it in so we can cross thread it. Like I say, you really don't want to, because it's a vent. It's not pressurized or anything like that. I'm just hand tightening it. And tighten it. That should be fine there. Okay, let's tackle this side. I got universal joint because the intake's a little closer to the side. Let's just take it out. I need a depth socket, but I don't have a 23 depth socket. Can't get a wrench in there properly, so let's try this. <laughs> this, this intake in the way, and he's being a butt. So 
let the universal joint go all the way down. There we go. It's not tight at all. It's just that initial little bit of torque that's on. It's on. Cut that off. Let's go ahead. Get this on. Twenty six. Oh, the stubby. Okay, so that's it, nice and flush. I don't have the actual grip unwanted, so I will actually use the wrench on this side just to give it a little. Tightening. And that's it. A little quarter turn. Nothing too crazy. We got our factory PCV out. We've threaded in place hand tight, not too crazy tight, hand tight, these adapters. Now we have our tubing to go on with our nine degree fitting. A little wrench will fit. Okay. All right. Got it nice and tight. You see right here the extra height it needs with those spacers. All right. We got that nice and tightened down. And we get our nipple kit, the rubber nipple kit, not the silicone nipple kit that came with it. Is this the smaller size? No, it's the second smaller size. It's a little too loose. It's a little too tight, so it's going to be a suction. We put the second size, and then we're going to secure it with some zip ties. Let's get our hose clamps. In place. Okay, I put some silicone spray on the ends of these. Makes this slide in a little easier. Probably gonna secure that down there like that. Apparently, I don't have any more thick black zip ties, so we'll go with racing red. What you think, guys? And there you have it, we're all done. We have replaced the factory PCV valves, inline tubes into the manifold. We've put on the adapters, treaded on our words are hard. Our fittings, their tubes, and their vents in here. We've clogged on and zipped hide the inlet manifold because we don't want a vacuum leak there. That's the inlet to the crankcase, but it's an inlet into the combustion chamber and we don't want to have unmetered air going into the engine. 
This is going to vent the crankcase up to here. Like I said, this is a temporary solution because eventually I'm going to get a bunch of blow-by and a bunch of crud and, and, and oil consumption is going to start um, condensing there. I'm still trying to figure out which catch can I want to go with, but this is a temporary solution. So let's go ahead and start it up and we'll see no more vacuum. Look at that. No more vacuum. It's not sucking it back in. But again, nothing. So guys, don't forget, when you're looking at doing your three inches, remember, tune, it's very necessary. Cut your radiator support, protect your AC lines, and make sure your crankcase ventilation is taken care of. Can't leave the OEM system. You saw earlier in the video, and also the teaser video I did before this, on the other social medias, TikTok, Instagram, and stuff like that, how much suction it was after a good drive. You can see now, that's idling nicely, Everything is running good. You don't really hear a lot of suction. The, it, the dipstick isn't being sucked back in. The crankcase is venting properly. Whichever way you go, your catch can, atmospheric recirculation, if you do go recirculation, remember, you have to have the air metered from the mass airflow. But if you think this is awesome, and you do enjoy the video, the content, the information, hit that like, mash that subscribe, share it with your friends, hit that bell. Leave a comment, guys. I like engaging with you all. I like talking to you all. Leave a comment. Let's have a chat together. And until next time, guys, y'all have a good one.